Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Ryan and uh, I'll be leading today's webinar. Um, something about me. I've been teaching teacher training for over 17 years um, here in the UK and also abroad. I've taught many different nationalities, pretty much every nationality from every continent. I've taught many ages, different contexts, um, business English, academic English, um, and many different uh, specializations in English, English for engineering and so on. So it's my pleasure to pass on some of my experience for you today. Um, I hope that you can all hear me very well. Can you just drop me a comment to let me know that you can see and hear me okay? And please let me know where you're you're watching from today. I'm actually near London in the UK. So I'd be really interested to know where you are watching today. Okay, that's great. Hello, Mary from Canada. Thank you, Mena. That's great. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Natalia, greetings from the Ukraine. Greetings right back to you, Natalia. From Muscat uh, in Oman. Um, and that's from Mia. Wow, that's a great location. Um, in the new in the UK Northwest. Uh, thanks very much. And hello from France. That's wonderful. Okay, Mena from Egypt. That's fantastic. Uh, TBR, hello from Lanzarote. Oh, I wish I was there at the moment. It's very cold in the UK right now in the, uh, the start of December. Cold and grey, but uh, it's nice and warm in, in the webinar. And we have Johan from South Africa. Okay, great. Let's get right into it, shall we? So we're going to talk about authentic materials today. And before we get into that, I, am, I want to ask you, what are authentic materials? What are authentic materials? Um, so just give me a definition of what you would say authentic materials are. What's your idea? What are these things that we call authentic? What is authenticity when it comes to teaching English? So Mia or my Mia says uh, it's original and not copied. Hmm. Original. Yes, that's certainly true. Authentic material can be can be original. It doesn't have to be. Uh, Natalia says original, not adapted. Adapted for what, Natalia? Bearing in mind our context. What is truly original? Mena says materials that are not, let's have that comment up actually. Materials that are not specially made for the classroom. Okay, newspapers, articles, bus schedules. Okay, that's a good definition. Um, yeah, thank you, Natalia. So learners, for learners of different languages. Mm -hmm. Okay. Johan says, teaching materials that are usually used. Hmm. Can you expand a little bit on that, Johan? I'm not quite sure what you mean there. Um, and TBR, handmade materials for games. Hmm. Handmade materials. Can you give me some more on that, please, TBR? Handmade materials for games. 
for example, a, a computer game, a video game, console game, is an example of an authentic material. It's an authentic text, if you like. When I say the word text, I'm not just talking about the printed words on a piece of paper. I'm talking about a video. I'm talking about a song, um, audio, a game, a game a piece of graph a graphic for example that's what i mean by text any kind of thing that you could process um receptive material okay i think you get the idea guys i think you get the idea so authentic materials are things that um haven't been designed especially for learners of English. So usually if you look at materials for English language students, they're graded, which is what I mean to say is that they are adapted, they are made, made maybe simplified and made more um, appropriate for different levels that we teach. So for example, you might see in a textbook, um, a, an extract from a book or an, a newspaper article but it's not how it was in the real world it's been adapted for the classroom and uh, let's just have a couple more examples here it's maria says our own thoughts on a specific subject in written form okay yeah so if, if i write something down that's not designed for an English lang language learner, if I if I write in my diary, for example, not that I would share my diary with with my students, but that is an example of an authentic text. You can share your diaries if you like, but uh, I don't. I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> um, but yes, definitely authentic, uh, and uh, also Johan from known from known sources um yes okay um authentic text can come from known sources but also would you say from unknown sources as well would we are we are we trusting where it comes from um in the age of fake news and so on and disinformation for example um a quote a quote is is often uh, a good source of an authentic material if it's unaltered um, and we can use those in the classroom sometimes quotes come from an unknown source isn't it? anon anonymous so it could could well be that for example um Mena says tv interviews and radio broadcasts yes exactly that's the idea so a tv show um a, a movie uh a a music video a podcast radio show these are all examples of authentic materials if they haven't been altered in any way for the classroom okay that's great thanks guys that's really wonderful um and later later on in a, in a moment we're going to be talking about the advantages and disadvantages of using authentic materials so i'd like it to ask you what would be let's think about the advantages of using authentic materials in the classroom why would we want to do that what's the benefit to us and what's the benefit more importantly to our students why would we want to use something that's not designed for the purpose of teaching english what do you think Here's some more examples while we're thinking about the advantages. Online forms and information to register for a sports event. Yes, okay, yeah. A registration form is an, is a, an example of a, um, a authentic text. Um, a, compl a complaint, for example. Um, application form, bus timetable. Anything that's out there in the real world, we can use. 
Okay. Okay, wonderful. So you've got some great ideas here for reasons why we might want to use that, the advantages of authentic material, um, because it's what the students will use outside the classroom exactly. We want to try to replicate as much as possible a real world kind of useful scenarios uh, and make it uh, practical and useful for our students as much as possible in our classrooms. Students are introduced to real world language. Yep, absolutely. Might give students real life situations and conversations as examples to students. Yep, yeah, okay. So, uh, um, for example, it could be the comments, the real comments on, on a YouTube video, as long as you check them first before you unleash them in your classroom, because you never know. YouTube comments are like a box of chocolates, a, sometimes a nasty box of chocolates, and you never know what you're going, going to get. So, but they can also be a really good source of authentic material. Um, quite often your students will be able to correct the grammar in the YouTube, YouTube comments, for example. Um, for fluency in the native language being taught, um, yes, um, if it's, for, exa for example, a dialogue in a movie or a, a sitcom or, or something like that, a play, um, a play manuscript, um, a, a screen, um, a, what am I thinking about, a mm, screenplay. Um, yeah, it's great. You can get your students to practice that. Um, although, if we're talking about um, a piece of fiction, fiction or a screenplay something that's written for a movie although it's not authentic in as much as to say it's made it's made up it's a piece of fiction it's still authentic material because it's not designed for the classroom okay let's have a few more examples so students can recognize text or dialogue that's not only made for the classroom yeah okay we want to challenge our students, don't we? Putting stu students in real life situations. Very good. Uh, hello. Uh, area of interest. Yes. Uh, so we might want to, once we find out what our students are, in, are interested in, which is very important um, to engage them, we can find some authentic material to help us um, in the classroom to uh, to kind of delve deeper into their interests. They bring the language to life there and expose students to what they might encounter if they travel abroad, for example. Oh yes, yeah, very good point, yeah, okay. Um, so can we start thinking now about the disadvantages, some of the disadvantages of using authentic materials and we've seen there are many many advantages of why we would use them what about some of the disadvantages here's just an, one more advantage they are real day-to-day -day english material so to students authentic material is interesting and relates to the real world okay all right that's great so <clears throat> Bearing that in mind, what would you say are the disadvantages or the drawbacks of using authentic materials in the classroom? Sue says, uh, could be overly complex. Um, in, yes, in terms of the language, the, the difficulty, it's ungraded, it's raw, authentic um, language. So it could be quite complex if, if we are including things like um, idiomatic language, colloquial language, slang, um, non-standard English, neo, neo uh, new words, for example, that uh, crop up in, in English, portmanteau words, blended words and so on. Um, it could be quite complica complicated for our students. So we have to support that and we'll talk about that in, in a moment. 
you might have to do a lot of screening before you use it yes exactly as i mentioned with the uh the, the youtube comments and the social media comments uh yeah we we would try to vet everything that we use in the classroom we we don't want to um inadvertently expose our students to something that they they shouldn't be seeing or you know what what they choose they, they might choose to read it outside the classroom or something but inside the classroom we could we can definitely screen and we can kind of uh, filter out anything that we don't want them to be exposed to students may not be able to differentiate different types of language when to use and where yes yeah, so the um so the, the kind of the register the um the uh, appropriateness of language for example um might be um worthwhile pointing that out in um, when what the right time to use the language would be it's a good very good point students may be discouraged if they can't understand them some of the material contains incorrect grammar yeah exactly so if we're talking about the uh, what we try to do is is present an accurate model of the english language to our students and, and if it's authentic it might not necessarily not be grammatically correct or there might be spelling mistakes and so on pun um, punctuation errors and so on but again that might be a good opportunity for your students to to correct those those authentic mistakes um and in terms of i'm um, not understanding them and being discouraged yeah so we have to kind of, whenever we use slightly more challenging material with our students whether it's authentic or not um we we need to kind of set their expectations tell them that maybe it's okay if they don't understand everything maybe we just use a, a small sample of that authentic material um remember we grade the task and not the text so we can use a, a very complicated complicated authentic text quite complex language but we can just use extracts from that if we wanted to we can use that with any with any different level really we grade the questions that we're asking and, and the task it might be one person's opinion yeah very good point yeah so we want to be careful about um mm, well bringing we don't really want to bring our own opinions very much in the classroom depending on the, the topic um we want to be careful about the topics that we raise in the classroom as well um if it's something that may be controversial for example we need to bear that in mind yep that's a very good point let's just have a few more trans translations might not be word to word if slang or idioms are being used misunderstandings of sayings yes exactly so idiomatic language by its its nature is uh can be completely different um and nonsensical when you make a, a word for word translation um, um some idioms have some commonality across languages then we might share certain idioms but other idioms yeah we might uh, need to be thinking about that <clears throat> sometimes listen listen to authentic material like news or films could be difficult because there are lots of local dialogues dialects in english yes great point regional di uh, variations in accent and so on but um yes again i think this could this is good to expose uh, students to different types of english as well not the only english from these isles that we call the british isles english belongs to the world so we can have different geographic uh, variations on english that's a really good point okay and if when if not well selected it can be inappropriate to students age level or social practices yes so we need to be aware of cultural differences as well my god we've got so many things to think about haven't we in in our english uh, lessons all of these different variables 
but uh, hopefully I can point you in, in the right direction when it comes to authentic materials. Okay, let's get on. So we talked about what they are. Authentic materials are, are materials designed um, for native speakers, na native users of English, for mother tongue speakers, would use in everyday um, real world contexts and newspapers, magazines, TV shows, um, audio, um, radio podcasts and movies and so on. Um, a restaurant, restaurant menu, good example of an authentic material, perfect if you're your your um your topic is food um and you're you're practicing functions for ordering in a restaurant talking about the vocabulary of eating out uh, songs are a great source as well um you can look at the the lyrics then um and uh, dissect the, the the lyrics of a song newspaper articles online blogs as well yes of course yep um so again what we said about blogs so this is uh, maybe someone's it may be an opinion piece for example it could be a travel blog um newspaper uh, and tv adverts as well yes very good adverts are a great source of discussion and um mm, source of materials for the classroom as well um, the many great adverts that we can remember um so all of these are very, very good examples of authentic materials. So what, what's the difference between authentic and EFL teaching materials? So as we've already discussed, you, you know, you're doing all the hard work for me today. You're giving me the great answers. Authentic materials are not created for teaching the language, but are used to enable students to immerse themselves in new language. So then they're not they're not created with students in mind um they are for native speakers of english native users and we may need to um, adapt them if we want to adapt them for the classroom um in order to benefit our students Uh, also, non-authentic material is anything that has been designed especially for the process of learning English. So some of the vocabulary may have been changed to be more level appropriate. Um, it could be simplified grammar. Uh, we might take the, these materials might have uh, the complex language might have been extracted from them and replaced with with um, more appropriate grammar for the, the level that we're we're working for are working at um, worksheets textbooks etc um, audio material um, and websites for language learners uh, applications as well applications and the phone um, on our uh, computers these are all specially designed for learners and um, <clears throat> There is a place for those alongside using authentic materials as well. OK, well, let's talk about some of the advantage then. So I think um, it's incredibly motivating for students to learn with authentic materials. Um, when a student understands an authentic text, it's, it's a really, really great achievement, I think. And they, their motivation is definitely increased. Um, when they can understand, um, the, you know, these L1, these first language texts, it's really good. Um, as we discussed, the exposure to the natural use of language in a genuine context. Yes. So it's a real, real life situation. It could be an in interview. It could be report re reporting um, a news story, something that actually happened and what people are really saying about what happened. Prepare students for daily life in a foreign country. Yeah, so especially if uh, you're you're teaching in the UK and you've got students that are here in the UK studying and and staying here while they learn, it's very useful to, for you to expose them to to daily life in the UK. 
We can also select topics according to the interests of our students. Um, it's really important to find out, I think, what makes your students tick, what grabs their interest. Because I think if, uh, if, if you're not really interested in learning something or it doesn't engage you, it's very difficult to, to learn, I think. So try to find out what your, your students like. Um, it can give your students confidence in engaging in conversation with native speakers as well. They, they've seen these phrases, they've seen real examples of real language. It provides a great challenge for motivated students as well. So once they've unlocked the language of an authentic text, it really gives them a lot of power in their own learning. So here's a, a few ex um, problem and solution or disadvantage and how we can work around that disadvantage. For example, unlike graded texts, <clears throat> excuse me, unlike graded texts, some of the language may be unfamiliar to the students. So the solution, we can simplify the material um, while keeping the authenticity of that to suit the level of the student. These adapted resources are called semi-authentic materials. So we've got the, the essence of authentic texts, but we're, we're kind of maybe making some slight and nuanced adjustments to the text to make it a bit more mm, easier to process for our students. So an example might uh, be to, uh, to extract um, a part of a paragraph from a text, for example, take out some of the idiomatic language or change it to make it a bit more literal so our students can more easily understand. Here's another situation. Use um, a language profiler to select difficult vocabulary items for teaching. So we can profile the, the language, we can feed it through an application, uh, we can select the appropriate level and we can take out the, the, the language that we need. A disadvantage of this is that, uh, you know, this cliched language, this jargon um, is often used and it's it can be difficult for our students to understand. You have to unpack that type of language quite often. Maybe that's what you want to focus on. Maybe you want to focus on a different target, uh, target language, but a particular tense, for example or phrasal verb um, and we can put these into a context as well uh, context is really important for new language to contextualize contextualize the learning actually um, to make it worthwhile for our students to to learn um, to make it to make our outcomes uh, relevant to our students so put new language, new uh, vocabulary into context. And also we need to check understanding. So our, our concept checking questions come into play here. Um, very important when we're trying to get across new vocabulary from an authentic text. So another disadvantage, listening text for example, podcasts, <clears throat> adverts, songs, and so on. The pace of the speaker may be very fast. Yes, um, there's a real life example from my teaching last week. We looked at a, uh, a psychologist talking on YouTube. Um, in fact, it was a neuroscientist talking about the effects of social media on the brain. It was an advanced class, but still the the person was speaking very, very quickly. It was an academic, so it needed uh, a very strong focus to listen uh, two times, a few times for your students to, to get the understanding that they need. You can also unpack the, the text. You can have captions as well. You can have a printout of the, uh, the transcript. All of these things can help you support um, a very fast talking person with a different dialogue, um, dialect, for example. 
you can play the uh, the listening text several times. As I've said, you can even slow it down if you wanted to. Um, and you can look at isolated parts of the language. And here's just that to reinforce what I was saying, Sue. Yeah, the velocity of speech can be adjusted on YouTube. Absolutely. Thank you, Sue. Uh, yes, um, it's it's really interesting now that the, the listening habits of some people prefer to listen to things at twice the speed. I think it's a little bit too much for me, though, and probably too much for your students, too. But we can do that. We can definitely slow things down. That's for sure. OK, so let's look at another disadvantage. Accents of various speakers can be difficult to understand. Students may have only heard uh, our own accents or the accents of the teachers in our school, for example. Um, and they might have only heard before the accents of their teachers in different contexts, maybe non-native speaker, non-native teachers native teachers maybe with with um, regional accents so we need to give a variety to help our students understand because there's not only one type of english there's there's many different types of english out there we need to equip our students to understand that um, we need to find examples of different accents and assist in that ex exposure to our students so the north of england south of england well welsh scottish irish accents um constant you know all the different varieties of lovely dorset accents and newcastle accents and and liverpool manchester london accents are great for our students to to have that variety um, so also topics may not be suitable for a mixed gender um, multicultural class. Yeah. So as we as we said, we need to take into consideration the cultural um, aspects of our of our learners, the cultural background um, and provide material uh, suitable for that context. So it's better to, I think, avoid. Well. It's difficult to avoid politics at the moment, um, especially in the UK, I think. Um, but um, we try to avoid in, in the whole, on the whole, to avoid politics, unless it's for a very specific class, maybe. Uh, of course, we want to avoid any kind of um, ism. Um, we want to avoid uh, the violence and, and tri tricky situations like, like, uh, like death and mortality um yeah profanity these type of things are uh, may not be necessarily suitable for our for our students so uh, we need to be quite selective and filter out some of the the possibilities uh, the focus is on learning the language so the students must be comfortable with the materials they're exposed to. Yeah. So always the focus is always the language. Um, um, language without culture is is nothing. So we need to kind of contextualize that. We need to teach the culture as well. But always we we come back to focusing on the language and, and equipping our students. So how do we use authentic materials? Um, what's the kind of the process here? Um, so, you know, we can get, we can source materials from just about anywhere, as we've discussed. So what we do, uh, for example, let's think of an example. We're, we're teaching um, a topic in a, in a course book. Let's, let's go with food again. So we're teaching the topic of food. So we can think about a context, ordering in a restaurant, going out, looking for a restaurant um on a, on a website um for example uh, rev a review online review tripadvisor for example this is all authentic so we can actually set a task based approach for this um and try to simulate the real world scenario as much as possible so we choose the situation um we set the theme and the context and we can kind of kind of reverse engineer or backwards plan 
what um, our students will be able, will already know about this context from their own native life, from their own life, um, and also, you know, what the outcomes will be at the end of the lesson. What will be the the aims of the lesson? What are they going to be able to do at the end of the lesson? So, in this context, um, the students will be able to order. Uh, a free course meal in a restaurant they will uh, be able to book a restaurant over the phone for example they might be able to make a reservation they'd be able to read a review um they'll be ordered they'll be able to pick out uh, items on a menu that maybe they haven't seen before and they'll be able to understand what they're they're ordering in a restaurant so there's there's the kind of uh, example for you so you can think about your own context um, and you can find authentic material to, to sit um, inside your, your theme or your subject material. <clears throat> um, especially when it comes to vocabulary. So we can, we can pick out, we can search for the vocabulary, we can, we can identify the vocabulary that we want and we can go out there into the real world and select authentic material that contains our target vocabulary, for example. Okay. Um, think about the, um, the editing of material. Um, we don't want to give our students too much uh, to process. Uh, we might want to shorten texts, for example. Uh, we also need to think about copyright materials. Um, we don't want to we check your the school or you've got the context that you're you're teaching in how to properly um, use uh, copyright or protected material. Okay, what else do we need to do? Uh, how will this material, this resource, fit into our lesson? In which part of the lesson is it going to be? Which stage of your lesson? How does it fit in with the other parts, with the, the, the grammar delivery, the MFP, meaning form pronunciation? What vocabulary items will they need to learn in order to do this? Do you need to pre-teach the vo vocabulary or do you want to post-teach the vocabulary and let your students pick out the vocabulary that they notice in the text? You know, Maybe I'm going off on a tangent here slightly, but pre-teaching of vocabulary, this is not authentic when you think about it. In the real world, we're watching the news. We don't get a list of words that are coming up in the news broad broadcast as native speakers, do we? If this only occurs in the classroom, um, it would seem. So maybe if we want to simu simulate a real world context in our classroom, pre-teaching might not be part of your plan it might be for your students to discover the, the the language and then you can feed that in and discuss that after um we also need to use texts that don't have to be um, shortened too much that we can we can choose to edit material um usually if we're we're finding a song or a, a piece of audio we can search on youtube we can search for the the duration that fits plenty of fantastic five minute videos out there for us to to use for example this is really good for these short kind of exercises um, or for warmers for example um, a, a one minute video clip or one minute sound um, of dialogue is perfect for a warm-up um, and do check the uh, check also when you're photocopying um, certain materials as well uh, if it's a book or um, 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 a, a copyrighted text for example just have a think about that as well okay let's have a look at this example here it's adult or high school classes use current newspaper use a current newspaper and let the students find an interesting item to talk about it yeah so we can use the actually the whole newspaper but we're allowing our students to pick out the stories that interest them. This is what we do in the, the real world, isn't it? We don't read every single word and line in, in a newspaper or magazine. We pass on to the things that we're interested in and your students can do that too. 
Students may be aware of the news story in their own language, for example, um, and generate interest to make them feel more comfortable. So, yeah. So what I re recommend is um, to my students, if they've if they've read some piece of authentic material in their own language, they could read it again in English. So they they help helps understanding. They can con contextualize that. It could be a news story or it could be a piece of fiction, for example. It could be a movie or a song. Well, maybe not a song, but uh, you see what I mean. It could be um, a novel, for example. Um, Harry Potter, many people read it in their native language and you can reread that again, enjoy it again while learning English. Why not? Okay. Here's a role play. Role plays combine authentic text with re realia. So using props, real world objects, bring it in. You can stage a mini play in your classroom. Um, if you're ambitious, you can direct a short movie um, if you're good with the camera or your students are, are talented at making videos. You can bring in a screenplay, for example, or a, a script. Shakespeare maybe if you're really very ambitious um, but it doesn't have to be so uh, so ambitious it could be uh, just a dialogue um, from a, a, a sitcom a restaurant a menu um, a, a, a blogger talking about food for example a social media post about a, a great restaurant um, songs and video clips we again we can play that a few times we can play once for gist and a second or a third time for more detailed work um <clears throat> lots of discussion can come from that you know there's a great opportunity for your students to discuss a text together before you uh, talk about that in your class okay um example of student interaction so you can make small buzz groups, for example. Um, your students can help each other with gr difficult words or grammar, and they can help each uh, to correct each other. Peer correction, peer work in the classroom. Um, sometimes students are a bit reticent to talk out loud in the class. So they're more comfortable talking in small groups with their, their contemporaries, with their fellow students. Um, and, and I think all of these things help add to better um, communication and interaction in the classroom. Okay, all right. So I think what we'll do, we'll go into a Q&A section in a moment, but um, um, I hope that's been, that first section has been useful for you. So let's just recap. So we talked about some of the, um, definitions of using authentic text we, we we talked about what it is so it's anything that's designed to be um, consumed by a non -nat by a native speaker not designed for the english language classroom so texts um, from a magazine newspaper radio audio movies etc um, menus bus and train timetables, um, social media posts, um, all containing advantages and disadvantages. They are fantastic for exposing our students to the real world, um, different dialects and different accents, different colloquialisms and idiomatic language but on the other hand they they can be more challenging because we need to edit them sometimes we need to uh, adapt them they can be ch um, for sure very motivating for our students but also quite challenging as well and uh, we need to support our students when using authentic texts um, we looked at a few examples. For example, we want to uh, help our students with ordering food in a restaurant, food vocabulary. Um, we can think of many more examples, uh, booking a holiday, um, uh, applying for a job, 
yep, we can look at job adverts, for example. Um, we can look at shopping uh, interactions with with uh, people in a in a shop, um, advertisements, uh, reviews, and so on and so on. So, um, yeah, have a think about which authentic material you would like to use next in your classroom. Okay, let's have a few questions. Sue, thank you, Sue. At what CEFR level would you recommend introducing authentic materials? So uh, hopefully we're all familiar with the CEFR, the Central European Framework for Reference Language Levels. So A1, A2, A, B2, B1, B2, C1, C2. Um, and what level is appropriate for using authentic materials? Well, again, I would personally, I believe that authentic materials can be used with every level. We need to grade the task, but not the text. For example, teaching very young learners. Uh, nursery rhymes. A nursery rhyme is an authentic text. <laughs> um, it's not designed. Many are de not designed for learners of English. They're designed for children, but we can use them in the classroom nevertheless. Um, for example, with low level adults, we can use for sure restaurant menus, simple timetables, uh, TV guide, cinema listing, for example. And then with or uh, very advanced students, we can use uh, even uh, newspaper articles, we can use academic texts, perhaps we can use uh, extracts from a book. So I think the whole range, excuse me, the whole range of, of levels, we can use authentic materials. It's a good question. Um, are there any other questions that you have about using authentic materials? Which materials would you not use? What can you think of anything that you would not use in the classroom as well? So, for example, um, let me think of the last authentic materials I used. Okay, so I think it was a newspaper article. And I was teaching uh, a teenage um, group, um, and it was a, a web article about the World Cup and about some of the issues in the World Cup. Um, so I was very careful to check this before I used it to see if it wasn't too controversial, there wasn't um, too complex language. It was actually a website designed for children, but for native English children to, to read. Um, and it was it was a perfect piece of material um, to use in the classroom. Um, and um, it was a, a very successful lesson. Um, and it was perfect. And it is current as well. That's the other good thing about using authentic material. It's bang up to date when we use material from a textbook um it's it's out of date sometimes as soon as it's printed isn't it so especially things about technology if you find yourself looking at um some material some printed materials about technology my god it's out of date the second it, it hits the paper isn't it you know technology moves so quickly so that's a great opportunity to use a, a blog a youtube blogger talking about the latest iphone for example here's a comment from mena uh, wouldn't use political or religious material yes i would t agree with that as well it's definitely <clears throat> i think best avoided in the classroom if you can um because um although it can lead to 
maybe good a good discussion with some of your more advanced groups so the adult learners um i, I wouldn't as a rule use um anything that um is going to be too it's going to cause uh, any kind of friction in the classroom that's the the uh that's what we want to avoid that's a really very good point thank you um here's a comment from sue sue says some social media sources that may contain distorted or fake news yeah so this is another example about material that you you wouldn't use in the classroom uh, yeah we have to be in our own daily lives we have to be careful about the sources of our, of our news and our information these days and of course we we want to do the same when we expose our students to uh, um, any any language from the real world okay um so any questions at all about using authentic materials any questions about the process about where to find them um how to edit them how to pick out the language that you need Mena, I love weird questions. Do you use social media posts, Twitter posts? Yeah, I've, I have in the past, but uh, as I mentioned, you have to check them before you use them. Be selective of the ones that you use. Often they're a really good source of real language about how people actually text and write on social media platforms in the real world. If you think about it, the, the it's often a kind of abbreviated form of language, um, not necessarily perfect grammar, but it's definitely authentic. You know, when I'm writing, I, sometimes I would not use uh, perfect grammar. Uh, writing an email or a short message, I might not use correct punctuation. I might use emoticons, emojis, and so on to support my text. So yeah, I definitely would use Twitter posts um, as long as Twitter exists. <laughs> Controversial, <laughs> uh, but I would definitely use them. Um, use YouTube comments and and Facebook posts and so on, um, and blogs and things like that from social media. Yeah, sure, why not? Um, thank you, Sue. It's that's appreciated. Uh, I hope that you uh, you got something useful out of the, the the webinar today. You mentioned using a language profiler. What did they do, and can you recommend one? Um, yeah, I, so these are becoming very popular. I can see with my trainee teachers um, when I'm giving um, a teacher training session. I can see that many. Um, new teachers use this to to look at a text so text is uh, you put a text through these kind of processes online it's the software um, lets you select the the level that you want to extract the, the language and I think they're using a, a corpus which is a, a, a database of language and it's um, categorized at each level so the software will pick out words from a text that you put in and it will sort them in the in the, the level that you need um can i recommend one um there are so many different ones out there my advice is to use a variety of them um to to be quite honest i don't really use them myself i'm a, i'm a kind of uh human language profiler <laughs> um because I've got, uh, I've built up quite a good knack of of knowing what language works at which level, which you will do when you've got um, some experience as a teacher. You'll be able to have a radar for the kind of language that works well with with your level. But um, yeah, if anyone else has got a good recommendation for a language profile, please put that in the comments. And as if by magic, uh, vocab kitchen is is one such example. Yeah, I've I've heard about that one. I think I've I've seen that one 
being used. I think it's quite popular. Um, from what I can see, it works quite well. Okay. All right. So we're just coming to the end of the uh, the webinar now. Well, thank you. How often how often should we use authentic material in the classroom? Can you overuse it? Is it time consuming to choose the material in that bit? That's a really good point. Thank you, Mona. Um, well, I think if you use a certain kind of material too much, it can be, uh, yeah, I think anything is too, it's too much, too little of, or too much of something is not good. So, um, yeah, I, I would have a variety. Of course, we, you know, we need support in our classrooms for material that's designed to, to help us teach the, the language. And that can live next uh, next to authentic material. So you can make, you can match it up. Um, I try. I would use a li little and often. I would say rather than using lots of authentic material in every lesson. Um, be selective. You'll find that um, depending on the topic, a piece of authentic text is the perfect material to use. Much better. For example, uh, as I mentioned about technology or things that are easily out of date. It's an obvious choice to use something um, authentic. Um, is it time consuming? It can be if you if you need to always edit the authentic material and use a language profiler, pick out the vocabulary, make a task. You know, we're all busy teachers, so sometimes it's good to get something off the peg, um, ready-made material. But then sometimes it's also quite engaging to use authentic material and adapt that for the classroom. Really good point. OK. Oh, well. So I think we'll end there. It's a good time to end. Thank you very much, as usual, everybody, for your comments. Um, I, I hope that you've enjoyed the webinar today and found it useful. Um, before I leave you, could I ask you, please, to um, go and give us some feedback about our webinars. So if you can follow the QR code and also if you could just please go to the, uh, the survey, I will leave this up for a, a few moments for you to go to the survey and give us some feedback. Let us know um, how we're doing. Um, I really enjoyed doing these webinars. I hope that you enjoy it too. Stay tuned for some more interesting webinars hopefully coming up very soon so i'll say goodbye thank you very much and uh happy teaching enjoy using authentic materials